Good morning. Um, I read a devotion this week. It's a short one. I just thought, when I read it, I thought I'd like to share it with everybody. It's not very long, but it was talking about Jesus and Jairus. It said, Jesus goes to Jairus' house to heal the man's daughter. They encounter a group of mourners. Jesus is troubled by their wailing. Why are you crying, making so much noise? The child is not dead, only asleep. From God's viewpoint, death is not permanent. It is a necessary step for passing from this world to the next. It is not an end, it is a beginning. When we see death, we see disaster. When Jesus sees death, he sees deliverance. Mark it down. God knows you and I are blind. He knows living by faith and not by sight doesn't come naturally. And I think that's one reason he raised Jairus' daughter from the dead. Not for her sake. She was better off in heaven. But for our sake, to teach us that heaven sees when we trust. I, it just hit me, and I wanted to share it with everybody this morning. Uh, good news, I got a letter from the NALC this, this week. And the letter says, We are pleased to report that the Executive Council of the North American Lutheran Church has voted to receive St. John Lutheran Church Hubbles as a congregation of the NALC. Your congregation is a member of a community of faith that is growing with every day in numbers and in zeal for mission. On behalf of the North American Lutheran Church, we welcome you to our shared life as people of God in mission and in ministry. Along with this letter came a sh about three-page uh, insert that tells you a little bit about the NALC. And I put one in everybody's box. I think a couple people I probably didn't. No, I, I, I thought I had enough, but I didn't. I'll, I'll see to it that you get them, but it gives you, it tells you what the NALC is all about and their beliefs. So I know some people have had questions uh, when we went through the process there, but uh, I wanted to make sure you got that, and I'll make sure everybody gets a copy. If you don't get a copy, please let me know. I'll be happy to get you one. Uh, sad news, I think probably most everybody knows that we lost a member last actually last Sunday afternoon junior Raleigh Goodapple passed away and his services will be this week uh, Thursday evening from 4 to 7 will be visitation at the Cook Funeral Home and then at 10 o'clock Friday morning will be the uh, services here at the church with burial out in the cemetery I uh, talked to Barb Barb is getting things ready for the dinner and she said she would, I asked her if I should make an announcement. She said, just let me take care of it. So, Barb. Barb, They're, they can't hear you. <laughs> oh, hey, but flip that number three there, the lapel. I hadn't got him turned on yet. Three from the right. <laughs> up the top, up the top, there. That's red button, it should go blank. Try it now. Oh. Right button. Yeah. <laughs> no.
I had talked, oh wow, I had talked to Jeff about this and he's gonna get someone to help set up the table, approximately around 100 people. And, uh, and then in the broom closet up on the high shelf, there is decorations, got the American flags and stuff. We'd like to get that down too. And, and Jane and I are gonna come over Thursday and we're gonna get the communion and everything ready for that. And I thank everybody for the donations. Thank you. Do you need any other food items or are you pretty well covered? We're pretty well covered. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Uh, also, after the service today, Janet would like to meet with anyone interested in talking about the Hubble Fest that is coming up. Just kind of gather here in the front. She's got some ideas and we wanted to bounce it off. If you'd like to put have your input, please uh, stay after church and uh, discuss that item. Is there anything else I've missed this morning? Uh, temperature. How's the temperature this morning? Is it good? Okay. I know we've had some issues the last couple of weeks. Uh, we got set on 68 this morning. It feels comfortable for me, but I wanted to ask everybody else. So I see nothing else. Oh, Tom? Hmm? Oh, yes. Uh, we, we've been talking about Sunday school. We're not getting basically anyone coming for Sunday school. And I will be trying to put together a survey to get everybody's thoughts as to what we can do to reactivate or get some interest back in Sunday school or a Bible study. So uh, I'll be getting that hopefully in the next two weeks. Anything else? Pastor, welcome back, Thank and you. it's yours. Shall we rise for the confession of sin? <clears throat> we worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing. We come before God, confessing our sins, known and unknown, trusting in God's gracious word of forgiveness, for all those whom he has called and chosen in Jesus. Most merciful God, we confess that we are sin against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and what we have not done. We have not fulfilled the following and anger is your spirit to storm rather than build up the communion of saints. Help us to lead a life worthy of the calling you have taken on our lives so that we might have the riches of your grace. We pray this. By the command and authority of Christ, I declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. We who were once dead through trespasses and sins in which we once lived are now forgiven and renewed out of God's great love for us in Jesus Christ. He has made us alive together with Christ through grace.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ who calls us to come and follow, the love of the Father who created us and calls us his own, and the power of the Holy Spirit who forgives and renews our life be with you all. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. The Lord is good. The Lord is merciful and kind. He gives strength to the weary, hope to the hopeless, and is bountiful in good fruit. The Lord be with you. <laughs> Let us pray. Sovereign God, ruler of all hearts, you call us to obey you, and you favor us with true freedom. Keep us faithful to the ways of your Son, <coughs> that leaving behind all that hinders us, we may steadfastly follow your path through Jesus Christ, <coughs> our Savior and Lord. Amen. <coughs> <coughs> The first reading this morning is in Galatians, beginning at chapter one or verse one. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm, then, and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. For the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. <coughs> if you bite and devour each other, watch out, or you will be destroyed by each other. So I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other, so that you are not to do whatever you want. But you, if you are led by the Spirit, <clears throat> you are not under the law. The acts of the flesh are obvious, sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, <clears throat> fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, and envy, and drunkenness, orgies, and the like, I warn you, as I did before, <laughs> that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh <clears throat> with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. The reading of the first verse, first, first lesson. Thanks be to God. <laughs> The Holy Gospel is a reading from the ninth chapter of the Gospel according to St. Luke, the 51st verse. Glory, Glory be to you, our Lord. As the time approached for him to be taken up to heaven, Jesus resolutely set out for Jerusalem, and he sent messengers on ahead who went into a Samaritan village to get things ready for him. But the people there did not welcome him because he was heading for Jerusalem. When the disciples 
James and John saw this, they asked, Lord, do you want us to call fire down from heaven to destroy them? But Jesus turned and rebuked them. Then he said, then he and his disciples went to another village. As they were walking along the road, a man said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus replied, foxes have dens and birds have nests, but the son of man has no place to lay his head. He said to another man, follow me. But he replied, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. And Jesus said to him, let the dead bury their own dead, but you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Still another said, I will follow you, Lord, but first let me go back and say goodbye to my family. Jesus replied, no one who puts a hand on the plow and looks back is fit for service in the kingdom of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to the Lord Jesus. Grace unto you and peace from God our Father and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. In the <clears throat> middle of the first century BC, Julius Caesar landed on the shores of Britain with his army. He took a bold and decisive step to ensure the success of his campaign. So he ordered all his men to march to the edge of the cliffs of Dover. And he commanded them to look down at the water below. <clears throat> to their amazement, they saw every ship in which they crossed the English Channel engulfed in flames. Caesar deliberately cut off any possibility of retreat back to Rome. Since his soldiers were unable to return home, their only option was to fight, either die or win. So they committed themselves to following Caesar in just one year, they conquered Britain. That was around the years 55 and 54 BC. Caesar wanted total commitment from his soldiers. He got it after forcing the issue upon them. You know, throughout the three years of the ministry of Jesus, Jesus called people to be his disciples, to be committed in following him. In the gospel lesson I just read, we heard the story of three prospective disciples. And in these three brief encounters, we discover that following Jesus is made up of two ingredients. Ingredient number one is commitment on the part of the disciple. With an understanding, number two, that being a disciple of Christ is costly. Now you'd ask, you know, I've, I've, I've been a Christian all my life. Why do you say it is costly? You know, can you think of a reason or two why it would be costly? And in all reality, I really would love to know what you think. Because I'm going to tell you why I think being a disciple is costly. Number one, Jesus must have priority over all your needs. In verse 57 of our gospel lesson, we read, as they were walking along the road, a man came to him and he said, I will follow you wherever you go. 
You know, the parallel passage from the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 8, tells us that this individual was a scribe. Scribes were religious scholars and leaders back in the days. The scribe was willing to follow Jesus wherever Jesus went. I believe he was sincere. I have no reason to think otherwise, do you? And Jesus responded to the man by telling him, foxes have dens and holes, birds of the air, they have nests. But I, Jesus, the Son of Man, have no place to call home. I don't have a house. I'm homeless. I don't have a place to lay my head. We know that Jesus encourages people to follow him. And I have no doubt that the Lord must have detected something special about this man. But I would say that this man was relying more on his feelings just at a moment of enthusiasm. He was probably accustomed to a very comfortable home and a pleasant and easy lifestyle. But in that impulsive offer, he failed to estimate the hardships of being a disciple. Now, don't misunderstand Jesus. <clears throat> Jesus was not discouraging him from following him. But he wanted this fellow to add up all the consequences of becoming a disciple. If you think you're going to sleep in an air-conditioned room with a bathroom, and if you think that the kitchen is going to be down the, <clears throat> down the hall, you have a maid going to prepare, it's not going to happen with me. It's not going to happen to become a disciple. I want you to open your eyes wide and understand what discipleship is all about. You need to know what you are getting into. Even the foxes have a den to call home, and the birds of the air have a nest to call home, but I do not have a place to call home. Are you willing to come and be homeless alongside me? In other words, Jesus was telling him, if you want to become a disciple, if you want to follow me, you must have the attitude of denying yourself and denying all your needs. A disciple must be willing to give up what others consider to be important or the necessities of life. Jesus invites you to discipleship. First of all, he lets you know that it is a commitment that will cost you something. It is not going to be easy. Let him or her who loves the Lord <clears throat> with his heart and her heart and not with their lips only be a disciple for Jesus. Don't tell me that you are a disciple of Jesus. Show me that you are a disciple of Jesus. Fair enough? I think so. Number two, discipleship is costly because Jesus must have priority over even your family. In verse 59 we read, and he said to other, another man, follow me. But the man replied, Lord, let me go and bury my father. St. Luke tells us that this was another prospective disciple. Now the word another, uh, he said to another man, this word another is significant in this text. In Greek, 
there are two words that translate another. The first is a loss, which means another of the same kind. For example, in St. John's Gospel, chapter 14, verse 16, Jesus said that he would send an alos, another of the same kind, a comforter as he is, referring to the Holy Spirit. But here in chapter 9 of St. Luke's Gospel, he uses the word heteros. Heteros is another but of a different kind. This man was different <coughs> from the scribe that he was not willing to follow Jesus, but in all reality was searching for sympathy and an excuse. So when he said to the Lord, first let me go and bury my father. You know, the first time as a child when I read this, I said, there is a liar for you. If my father died, do you think I'm going to be discussing discipleship with Jesus? Would you? I don't think so. But let's give him the benefit of the doubt. Apparently, he just received word that his father had just died and his request of Jesus was legit, legitimate and fair. Some commentators believe that this fellow's father <clears throat> possibly had just died and he just received a telephone call telling him, hey James, your father just died. And he told Jesus, you know, I just got this phone call, Jesus, I need to go bury my father first. <clears throat> it is my responsibility to go bury my father. I have to leave right now. You know, in Judaism, burying one's father still is a very sacred duty. So some feel that Jesus, in his response to this man, was unkind to him and wasn't too fair. But I really don't think that was the case. I think the man was looking for an excuse not to follow Jesus. I believe that the man's father was still living. If his father had just died, he, would be, he wouldn't be discussing discipleship with Jesus. Rather, he will be at the airport trying to find the earliest flight to take him home so he will bury his father. Especially being a Jew. You know, in Judaism, a person who dies before sundown, uh, sunrise is buried before sundown. And a person who is buried before, uh, after sunrise is still buried before sundown. So the period of time for burial can be anywhere from 14 <clears throat> to 4 hours only. And Jesus responded, fellow, I really am sorry to hear about your loss. You have my sympathy. But may I suggest, please, let the dead bury their own dead. But you, who want to be my disciple, <clears throat> go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Don't tell me, show me. Of course, there is a play on the words that Jesus used. Jesus was saying that those who are spiritually dead, those who don't have an urgent call in their lives to be disciples, let those go out and bury those who are physically dead. The point is, preaching and evangelizing and proclaiming the kingdom of God is so important, it cannot wait. I'm sure you heard the phrase that is attributed to the French historian and philosopher Voltaire. Good is often the enemy of the best, right? 
Meaning, close enough is sometimes good enough for us. The man wanted to do something good at the expense of what is best. He wanted to bear his father, which was good, at the cost of what is best, to go and proclaim the kingdom of God and become a disciple of Jesus Christ. You know, I want to talk to all of us. <clears throat> we need to instill in all of us loyalty, love, nurture, and trust to the church and the Lord of the church. Never forget that your strongest family allegiance must be to Jesus Christ. Period. Dr. J. Herbert Cain, he was a professor at Trinity Evangelical Divinity School in Deerfield, Illinois. In 1980, he published a book entitled life and work on the, in the mission field. <clears throat> when he went to discuss discipleship, this is what he wrote, and I quote, there are two kinds of opposition to discipleship. One comes from non-Christian parents who have no use for religion, and the other comes from Christian parents who believe in discipleship, but are unhappy when their children become involved. The opposition that comes from Christian parents is more silent and more subtle, but nonetheless damaging. The pressure generated by this kind of situation is sometimes harder to resist than the outright opposition of non-Christian parents. Do you realize that when you were baptized, or when you, were, when we, when you brought your children to the baptismal font. That was the moment you and they belong to Jesus Christ. What will be your reaction if your daughter or granddaughter were to tell you that she is going to pack up and go to Angola for a two-year mission stint and work in refugee camps. Will you encourage her? In all real, let's be realistic. If my 16-year-old granddaughter comes to me and tells me she's going to do that, I'm going to find every excuse to discourage her. And I'm very honest in telling you that. Would you encourage your granddaughter to do the same? Would you encourage them to follow the Lord regardless of the cost? If you say yes, I tip my hat for you because that will be difficult for me and I am an ordained pastor. Commitment begins with discipleship. If you said yes, I praise the Lord for you. Finally, Jesus must have priority even over your friends. Another fellow came. A different, a lot, a different kind of a fellow. And he said, I will follow you, Lord, but first let me go and tell goodbye to all my friends and my family. Wait for me right here, I will be back. Another different kind of a disciple. He was different from the scribe in that he wanted to do something before he followed Jesus. He was different from the son that wanted to bury his father before following him. On the surface, you know, this request was simple. He, he had every right to go tell his mom and dad, I don't know when I'll see you next, but I'm going to become a disciple of Jesus, and chances are they're going to shun him, and they will have nothing to do with him. But at least he will see them, and he'll tell all this, the kids he grew up with, his cousins, his nieces, his friends, his co-workers, everyone, we're going to be 
leaving this area and I'm going to be this disciple of Jesus. But right underneath what he said, there is a layer, a layer of unpredictability. First, he wanted to bid all his family farewell. In that time and in that culture, it was different than goodbye, John. Goodbye, Nancy, I'm leaving. Oh, give me a hug before you leave, please, and that will take care of it. Uh-uh. Saying goodbye meant a series of goodbye dinners thrown by families and friends and neighbors. It wasn't just a plain old kiss a, on the cheek and a hug and a handshake and goodbye. It would have taken him, and I am not exaggerating, it would have taken him three to six months before he would get done saying goodbye. He told Jesus, just wait for it right here and I'll be back. The man showed Jesus what and who was important, who was first in his life. Making a commitment to following Jesus for that man was his middle. And Jesus said, no one who wants to plow puts a hand on the plow and start plowing looking backwards. No one does that. Such a person is not fit for work in the kingdom of God. This probably was a proverb. I at least think this was a proverb at the time of Christ. That just one who plows must look straight ahead and devote his or her full attention to the work that they were doing so they will not plow crooked furrows. So also for those who desire to be disciples, they must not follow what they think, what they want. They must not allow other matters to distract them from attention, from following Christ. Jesus did not reply, hey, sounds wonderful, just go home and I'll see you sometime next year. Jesus does not accept lukewarm commitment. Now comes my test. How would you describe your commitment to Jesus Christ? Do you just obey Christ when it is convenient and even then half-heartedly? Or do you seriously commit your life to following Jesus rather than following family and friends? <clears throat> I realize the demands of life. But you know, I look into a beautiful sanctuary and I see more empty seats than I see occupied seats. And in all reality, and I tell you that even Katie and I were talking about this coming this morning, it hurts me. It hurts me not because you are here. It hurts me because there are so many who need to hear the word of God, to be assured of the love of Christ for them, who need to know that they are forgiven of all their sins, who are not here. If every individual encounter driving from Kentucky to here, who's mowing on Sunday morning, come to church, we will have it sanctuary. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and even Sunday afternoon. They don't find tomorrow except on Sunday during church time. You know, you're the disciples. You are the committed ones. And I'm going to tell you, don't tell me. Show me. Show me your commitment to Jesus Christ and to the ministry of this parish by going out and knocking on doors of those who should be seated here 
and find out why aren't they coming to church. Find out what is missing that we need to plug in, but tell them what is missing in their lives. Hear the word of God, knowing the assurance that they are God's children for whom Jesus died to bring them eternal life. Did we cut a deal? Did we? I don't see any yeses. We should. You know, Jesus said that you are to go out and make disciples. Not only those who are all of us are to go out and make disciples. And that is your homework for the week. Go out and make disciples. Bring people back to church. And I guarantee you, I used to have a Bible study class for truck drivers. Did I tell you that? In a truck stop. It started with one truck driver. I used to go to the truck stop on 27 in Bryant, Indiana at 9 o'clock and have a cup of coffee. And this truck driver came to me and he said, uh, I want you to pray with me. So we prayed. Anyhow, I d- it developed into a, into a Bible study in a truck stop. And these tough-looking, bad-reputation men wanted to hear the word of God. They wanted to know that Jesus is there in that cab with them as they drive. They wanted to know that their families are watched over by the angels of the Lord. They wanted to know that their sins are forgiven. They wanted to know that they are the chosen children of God. These men were tough looking and their reputation throughout the nation is terrible. But believe me, those who I met, and I met hundreds of them, they were good, decent, devout husbands, fathers, children who wanted to be assured that that mark of the cross on their forehead at their baptiz- at the baptismal font is going to shine in their lives even behind the steering wheel of a semi. People want to hear the word of God. And if there is a time in our history that people are hungry to hear the word, today is the day. Now is the time. We are living in a chaotic world. And who can correct that chaos? Jesus Christ. So go out. Take one evening this afternoon, this, this week. Call, knock on doors, invite people to come back. Tell them about the love of Christ for them. And you know what? By what you do, Jesus will be victorious. He will give you the utterance, and he will open the doors for you. Amen. And may the peace of God, which passes understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.
church on earth and the church in heaven, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born by the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. <coughs> he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. <coughs> our response this morning is hear our prayer. United in Christ and guided by the Spirit, we pray for the church, the creation, and all in need. God of faithfulness, set the face of your church firmly on you. Rooted in your self-giving love, may the church find freedom in loving our neighbors. God of grace, hear our, our prayer. prayer. God of gentleness, strengthen the earth's ability to heal. Where there are dangerous storms, bring calm. There are destructive fires, bring rain. Protect homes, habitats, and livelihoods threatened by climate disasters. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of peace, guide all who govern that they place the good of their citizens above self-promotion. Anoint leaders of nations with your spirit of neighborly love. Protect, pro protect refugees and all who live under tyranny or conflict. God of grace. Hear our prayer. God of kindness, reveal your healing presence to all who are sick or dying. Help all those who grieve. Support the needs of any who are employed, hungry, or have nowhere to lay their heads. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of love, attend to those struggling with addiction, depression, or uncontrolled anger. Provide support systems and loving companions as they work towards health, that they may rest in hope and know the fullness of joy in your presence. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of joy, Give thanks for all who have died and now celebrate the inheritance of life in you. Keep their examples of faithfulness always before us, that we, that we trust your promises in life and in death. God of grace. Hear our prayer. God of every time and place, in Jesus' name and filled with your Holy Spirit, we entrust these broken prayers and those in our hearts into your holy keeping. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And one other thing we give praise for is for the Supreme Court's ruling on Friday that life is preserved even in the womb. I need to do this first. <laughs> Lord, we get some peace of Lord be with you. Peace of Lord be with you. Thank you. Thank you. Peace of Lord be with you. Peace of Lord be with you. Peace of Lord be with you. I'll give you a hug too. Oh, you might as well <laughs> give me a hug. Peace of the Lord be with you. 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 Peace of the Lord be with you.
you for bringing me the water peace of lord be with you peace of lord Praise God from home. <clears throat> For that you have bestowed upon this community of faith, Almighty God, we give you thanks. May it be used for further of your kingdom, the spread of your word in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to do him. Let us take with joy the Lord's body and blood. Thank you, Jesus, for setting us free from sin. May we walk in your ways and with you always. We look forward to your coming, Lord. We eat and drink in humble reverence of you. And we join the church on earth and the hosts of heaven as we praise your name and join their unending end. Holy. You are indeed holy, almighty, and merciful God. You are most holy, and great is the majesty of your glory. You so love the world that you gave her only Son, that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. We give you thanks for his coming into the world to fulfill for us your holy will and to, co- to accomplish all things for our salvation. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me.
Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Remembering, therefore, his salutary command, his life-giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and the promise of his coming again, we give thanks to you, Lord God Almighty, not as we are able, not, not as we ought, but as we are able. We ask you mercifully to accept our praise and thanksgiving. And with your word and Holy Spirit to bless us, your servants, and these gifts of bread and wine. So that all who share in the body and blood of Christ may be filled with heavenly blessing and grace. And receiving the forgiveness of sin may be formed to live as your holy people and be given inheritance with all your saints. To you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory now and forever. As our Savior has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. In Christ's presence there is fullness of joy. Come to the banquet. is the body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ is given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ is given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ is given for you. The body of Christ is given for you. The body of Christ is given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ is given for you. The body of is given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ is given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you.
God has given for you. The body of Christ in the United States. This is the body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ is given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. is the body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ is given for you. This is the body of Christ. This is the body of Christ given for you. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ and his precious blood strengthen and preserve you unto eternal life. Amen. May the Spirit of God fill you with his fruit. May he carefully guide your steps. May we follow the Spirit and keep his steps. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look up in favor upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit.
Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.